I really love this place and I love salmon because salmon are BC. They're part of our DNA. They're uh, food security, their ability to feed so many different other species. They feed the forests. They are part of the culture here. And without salmon, we just don't really have a BC as we know it. I've been paddling in this region for 40 years. And in that short time period, I've seen uh, the wild salmon populations crash. 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would be seeing 300 fish in a tiny little creek. Now when I go back there, I would be lucky to see 30. Some years, none. The populations in Clackwood Sound are at near historical lows. People are working incredibly hard to fix rivers here, but as soon as those salmon move out into the ocean, uh, no one's paying attention to them. What is happening? Why are we at such low numbers? And is there ability to bring them back from the brink of uh, extirpation? Yeah, we have a Department of Fisheries. They're responsible for protecting wild fish in Canada. I don't think they're doing their job. So the Department of Fisheries really doesn't know what's happening. They have become a captured regulator where they have a twin uh, goal of protecting wild fish, but also promoting the aquaculture industry. And what we've seen is they're making choices to promote the aquaculture industry at the expense of their mandate to protect wild fish. When I heard some of the rhetoric that was being said about the interactions between juvenile salmon and fish farms, I felt like I had to apply my skill set as a biologist to this problem. And no one has been looking at this currently. I couldn't just look away and I had to start looking at the juvenile salmon here and see how they're being impacted. The fish farms are, are paradises for pathogens and pests. They pack so many animals into a confined space that pests and pathogens can breed and multiply. And then because it's an open net pen, they can then spread out through the nets. Sometimes a juvenile salmon trying to get down from the river and out to the ocean, it might actually go right through the fish farm, but it doesn't have to actually get into the pen. These lice can spread through the nets and spread widely in the currents all over Clackwood Sound. Sea lice are a marine ectoparasite, and that means they are a parasite that lives on the outside of a host. If you do have sea lice on you, but it's not enough to kill you, you are still slower, so you have a harder time evading predators, and also are not as adept at feeding as well, because you just can't, can't keep up and catch food. There's a huge impact to the salmon in, in that respect without actually killing them as well. Half a million fish, if, if they have an average of three lice per fish, that's one and a half million lice on that one farm, and we have 20 fish farms here. So if you start to think about how many lice are on the fish farms in Clackwood Sound, the number quickly becomes staggering. And so what we're doing is we go out in our boat with a beach seine net, and this net is about 130 feet long, and what we'll do is we'll drop a person off on shore, and we'll pull the net around a school of salmon that we find. Once we have the salmon, we'll actually live lice them. And so what that means is we take them, we'll look at them, it's, it's very low tech, but it works well. We take salmon, we, we measure their height and their length. From that, we'll look at them with a little hand lens and in a baggie, and we'll just look for presence of parasites on them, uh, the life stages of them, we'll see if there's any signs of disease, and just their, their relative health. And then once we're done with them, we'll put them back in the water live. Early in the spring, we're finding not very many lice and uh, very small lice. And then as the temperatures uh, warm up and more salmon are starting to migrate out, we find a higher abundance of lice and larger lice as well. And as the lice get larger, they have a greater impact on the individual fish because they're actually eating the fish, eating the scales, mucus, uh, taking blood as they get older so they can have a large impact and potentially open the fish up to other disease or predation. So in 2018 and 2019, we had uh, relatively high sea lice abundances. We had somewhere around two to four average sea lice per fish. And so that is a very large load. Studies have found that uh, anywhere from 0.65 to one lice per gram of body weight can be lethal to a juvenile salmon. And uh, in the context of the salmon that we're looking at, they're usually about a half gram to two grams. We can expect that there would be impacts to the wild salmon populations here, given those sea lice numbers. And you have to be using the precautionary principle, which says that a lack of scientific certainty is not a reason to not take action. Alaska, for example, the state of Alaska to the north of us, has never allowed fish farms in their water. Last year, they had some of the biggest salmon returns ever. 
uh, here on the Canadian side of the border, we had the lowest salmon returns in British Columbia history. So, you know, it may be too simple to say that the further you go from fish farms, the more wild salmon you have, but that seems to be the case. When you look at the Discovery Islands, um, there was a recommendation made by the Cohen Commission that by September 30th of 2020, uh, if it cannot be proven that the fish farms in the Discovery Islands are not harming wild salmon, they would have to be removed from the water. We look at that and think, well, what about us? What about Clackwood Sound? We have five species of wild salmon. They're clearly being harmed by fish farms, and we feel that the fish farms here need to come out of the water as well. In the Broughton Archipelago, where they were studying the juvenile salmon wild or and farm interactions, they're expecting that the pink salmon populations there would go extinct or be extirpated within eight generations. That's only 16 years. And we are seeing similar sea lice abundances on the juvenile salmon here that they were seeing in the early 2000s. So that being said, there's a chance that we could be having huge impacts on the populations here from the sea lice numbers that we're seeing on farms. You know, wild salmon are everything on the BC coast. They are the backbone of the coast. We're so fortunate to have this incredible resource of, you know, millions of wild salmon coming back every year. They feed the wildlife, they feed the forest, and they feed the people, and they always have. To lose wild salmon here in British Columbia would be a tragedy of global proportions. And I'm going to work as hard as I can to make sure that we are able to protect wild salmon so that these ecosystems can endure, the cultures can endure, and people in the future will be able to experience the kind of wildness and majestic beauty of nature that I've seen in my time here. The amazing thing about salmon too is that they're so resilient. If you give them a chance, they'll come back. You just have to get out of their way. If we can minimize our impacts in any sort of way, we can just give them a fighting chance to really bring themselves back. It seems like the only possible solution is to remove the salmon farms from the ocean. We really have to do something now to make sure that we don't lose this all forever.